Hi everyone, welcome back to Spring Boot Essentials. In this video, we are going to start talking about tests. And uh, the first one will be how to test the data JPA. Basically, we are going to test our queries. So, the first thing that we have to do is go into the repository folder. And uh, you can just create a, a new test here based on this one. I'm not going to set up any before. Um, well, we can create this one. No, let's not create this one. Let's do it manually one by one. Okay, so uh, as you can see here, we have our first unit test, and this package is from JUnit. By default, Spring Boot 2.2. something, I think it started with 2.2. We are relying on Spring, uh, or sorry, and on JUnit 5. And as you can see here, we do have like the test, Spring Boot Starter test. And we have this uh, exclusion, JUnit Vintage Engine. So this engine is for people that are migrating from JUnit 4 to 5, and this will allow them to run in parallel. So if you are starting a new fresh project, just uh, leave this exclusion right here. Now, since we are going to test our database, it's a good idea to use another database. Well, we can use our own database because every time we test, uh, the data will be rolled back but i uh, rather use like uh, something in memory for that. So let's uh, just create here a new dependency. And here the dependency will be the famous uh, 8.2 database. So we have here group ID and it will be con.82 database. So this will be the database we are going to use for tests, just in memory. And the scope is test okay with this database and when we go back to our test that should be inside the test folder right here on the left side we are going to use the annotation called spring data uh, wait data gp test is not spring so by using this annotation we are going to tell spring that we are trying to test the data GPAs, the repository. So by doing this, uh, since we're using the unit 5, if you just uh, run this class, you will see on the console, once we have the first test, that we, we will have the name. But uh, with the unit 5, we can add here, for example, display name, and for example, anime repository tests. So. If we create a simple method here, public void test, and we add an annotation here called test. Oops, I don't need to run the application. I just need to execute this test class. You can see here that instead of using the name of the method, I'm using this display name. And if I remove this guy, now you will see that we have the name of the class. So we are going to use the display name. You can have way more information. So, first test. Since we are going to test the anime repository, we will need an attribute here. So we are going to create a private anime repository, anime repository, and I'm going to auto wire this anime repository. Now, the first one, it's a save. So since we are working with anime and I'm going to use that object a lot, I will just create a method here and I will call this method create, it will return an anime, create anime. And I would just return new anime dot, not new, let's use the builder, anime dot builder and I will just uh, send one name. So we, since we are going to create an anime, let's not send the ID, otherwise it will just update. And what we're going to use here, let's uh, use a good one, then say, Chitara is just one, Chitara slime, datakin, dot build. Now, Every time we want to use an anime with an ID, we are going to use the save. 
And remember, every time you execute a test, the state for the next one will not be maintained. So this is the purpose of unit test. Now, naming convention. Well, if you search on the internet naming convention for tests in Java, you will see articles like seven naming conventions for tests. So if you have seven naming conventions, you don't have a naming convention at all. So I will follow the one that I like. It's the name of the method. And then what that will achieve, in this case, save will persist anyway. And when this will be um, persisted, in this case, when successful. So for me, uh, most this part doesn't matter until I see a problem. So this is just my style. I like to keep uh, one style for all my projects. If you are in a project, just uh, keep in mind that it's important for you to keep the same. It doesn't matter what you do, just keep the same. So uh, there's one thing interesting. For example, if I execute this, uh, this class now, you will see that we have the name of the method. We could use the display name as well to change here, and we are going to use that. But uh, there is one interesting annotation here, display name generation, and we can use here display name uh, generator, replace underscore dot class. And uh, you will see this name without any underscores here. You'll see blank spaces. So you can easily override this class and replace with whatever character you want. So I'm not going to use this one, but I'm going to leave it here for people looking for it. So I'm going to use it at display name. And here I will say something like save creates anime when successful. It's almost the same thing. So anime, anime, create anime. And then we would like to persist. So this anime repository dot save this anime. So saved anime. And now we can assert if this anime was saved. There are several options to assert. You can use the Unity, you can use assert J and several other libraries. I'm going to use assert J. So assertions from uh, assert J, not the unit uh, Jupyter assert j dot assert that that saved anime uh, since we saved we should have an id is not no and uh, you can duplicate that so we have this one we can also for example get the name and also you can check here if the name is equal to the name we sent there. Make sure that you're not putting uppercase or anything. There you go. So now once we execute, we have our method uh, working. And if you scroll down the logs, you can see that it's actually inserting. So it's creating the table and then it is inserting. So you do have something real happening behind the scenes. Now to test the update, I will copy this one and then, uh, well, technically it's the save method as well, but this one, it's updates anime when uh, successful. And uh, the difference here, we still have the saved anime, but then I'm going to get this saved anime and I will change the name. So set name now will be that time I got incarnated as a slime. And I will change here, save, update anime when successful. And then it's almost the same thing. It's not new, it's not new. And the, but the, the change here is that the we should call the this that repository. We need to update, of course. Uh, saved enemy, and I'm introduce here updated enemy. Okay, now we have the updated version, and now assertions. You are we are asserting that the saved enemy dot get name. The name that we changed here 
it's equal to the updated one so we can execute everything and both of them are working and it's the same thing for the deletion let's give some space here so you can copy everything and now delete removes enemy when successful so now the method is delete remove enemy when successful so we create we save because we don't have any um, anime in the database we remove this one and uh, we remove this one as well and here we call this dot anime repository dot delete and you have two options you can either send an anime or an id so we are not testing the controller we are testing the repository directly and uh, how do we know if it's deleted because uh, this returns void what we can do is call like uh, this dot animal repository dot find by id we have the id here on saved enemy and this will return an optional enemy optional and we can try here that uh, enemy optional dot is empty is true we execute everything okay and we have now three tests working now we have the save update delete and we have uh, one anime repository with find by any uh, by name here available so we are going to test this custom query I'm going to copy this delete and I will change the name here find by name returns anime when successful so it's the same thing anime create one then we save and after we save we just change the name or we get the name for example get name whoops introduce local variable okay so let's uh, change here save the enemy dot get name I don't know why it was adding that way and uh, I forgot to change here so find by name return enemy or enemies when successful okay so we saved we have the name and now we are going to find by name using this name and I expect a list enemy list and now I'm going to do the proper assertions so assertions dot assert that enemies enemy list first I'm asserting that is not empty and then I can um, duplicate this one and I can make sure that we have here enemies dot contains this uh, saved enemy so we can execute everything to make sure that we have equals and hash code inside enemy in our case here we have uh, because of the data at data okay now uh, we have a find by I by name returning an enemy when successful and then we have to test if it's returned like an empty array so for example find by name returns empty list when no enemy is found and then we change the name return empty list when enemy not found and we can remove this one remove this one 
and uh, here we just have to give like a fake name and then we do the same this one but then we change here to this one to is empty and we test the entire class again and we have everything working and now we have to test uh, perceptions so there are a couple ways to test that let's uh, see at least one here let's copy this one and uh, when we do have an exception when we are trying to save for example we say the here that we are uh, expecting to not be empty so let's uh, test that this is actually working so the name here save throw it is constraint violation exception when name is empty and here is again save throw constraint violation exception when name is empty so we create a new enemy and now now actually we cannot create like this let's create a new enemy like this then we know that the name is empty and now we are going to validate I'm going to remove this one and uh, the assertions will be a bit different so we have two ways uh, to do this we could use assert that from by or assert that exception of type so let's uh, see both of them so assert that from by in this case when I'm trying to save in this case here anime repository dot save enemy and then it is going to throw an exception that is an instance of constant violation constant violation exception and um, maybe I have a misspelling constraint violation exception dot class let's uh, execute okay and uh, the other option is assertions oops assertions dot assert that deception of type and then we use this one dot class is from by and then we have this method it's basically the same thing in a different way dot and you can check for example with message containing and uh, we can copy this one and we can execute but we have to comment this out and we have the same result So the last uh, thing uh, you probably see in some codes uh, around the internet that uh, we have one annotation run with and you will see something like this spring runner dot class so basically this run if uh, it was used to provide a bridge between spring boot test features and JUnit so whenever we are using any spring boot testing features in our JUnit test so this annotation would be required but for us we are not going to use this one now only data JPA test it's enough and uh, I think even on spring uh, 2 we don't have that annotation anymore as you saw here there is no option to import that because uh, it changed a little bit and I think uh, the name now it's uh, with extended with and uh, the name here it's uh, I think spring 
extension.class. I think this is the way to do it in uh, Spring Boot 2, if I'm not wrong. And if we execute this, let me see if it will change the behavior. No, it didn't change, but I don't like extra code. Okay, guys, so this is it for Spring Data GP test. We saw a lot of ways to, to do it, so I hope you enjoyed. So I see you in the next video. Bye.